Hello everyone, welcome to my presentation on the melting of permafrost and the subsequent release of methane gas. Permafrost is formed in areas that sustain below freezing temperatures year-round. The water that had permeated the earth freezes, creating a very solid and strong ground, which is great for foundations of houses and other structures. Permafrost is found all over the north, including Alaska and Russia, and also including more northern parts of China, Europe, and Canada. Here you see a map of temperature changes from the last 60-ish years. The darker reds represent the more drastic increases in temperatures. Recorded here also are some of the unusually high temperatures that northern Canada, Alaska, Russia, and Western Europe have all been experiencing in more recent years. As you may have guessed, hot temperatures are not good for areas in which architecture is built upon frozen soil. Soil liquefaction occurs in water-saturated grounds that experience a large earthquake. Essentially, as the ground shakes, the soil particles compress, leaving the incompressible water to take the load of any structure above it. However, as water is not a solid, the structures may sink into the ground beneath it. The picture here is of a building in Japan from 1964 that sank into the earth below due to soil liquefaction. Thankfully, since then, foundation methods have evolved to contend with soil liquefaction. Unfortunately, when building in permafrost, soil liquefaction is not accounted for, as the ice is solid and can manage the force of the structures above it. Albedo is a measure of reflectivity of the sun's radiation. In a relatively clean atmosphere, ice reflects large amounts of heat back into space. However, if too much heat is reflected out, more ice will form as the Earth cools, thereby increasing the cooling of the Earth. This problem, a negative feedback loop, led to the ice ages that killed out most life on Earth. It was only when enough carbon dioxide was released into the atmosphere, which trapped the reflected heat in Earth's system, that the planet was allowed to warm and the ice to melt. Now, however, a positive feedback loop is occurring. As the carbon dioxide content in the atmosphere is increasing, more heat is trapped in Earth's system melting more ice as the Earth heats up, and allowing more heat to be absorbed by the ocean where ice once was. And as Earth continues to heat up, permafrost will continue to melt. GWP, standing for Global Warming Potential, is a measure of how much heat one ton of a given gas will absorb over a given period relative to the heat-absorbing qualities of carbon dioxide. Thus, carbon dioxide is given a GWP rating of 1. Methane gas, a lesser known greenhouse gas, has a GWP rating of 28 to 36 over a 100 year span, making it that much more dangerous to our rapidly heating Earth. Even worse, it has a rating of 84 over 20 years, making it increasingly harmful to us in the near future. And while methane gas's relatively short lifespan may seem to lessen its negative effects, the only way for methane gas to leave the atmosphere is to oxidize leaving water vapor and carbon dioxide behind, which also have negative effects in terms of global warming. So what does methane gas's high GWP have to do with permafrost? Well, the decomposition of organisms in an anoxic environment releases methane gas. In permafrost, these gas bubbles are frozen. However, with the relatively swift melting of the ice, large amounts of methane gas will be released in what is known as a methane bomb. This will promote a rapid heating of the Earth, which in turn will melt more permafrost, and the positive feedback loop continues. Methane release is not solely released by melting permafrost. An estimated 25% of methane release is due to oil and gas companies. And according to the International Energy Agency, technology exists such that those companies could reduce their methane production by two-thirds for no net cost. The agriculture industry, accountable for an estimated 40% of methane emissions, can also cut back by stopping the burning of fields after harvest and by feeding cattle reduced methane-releasing feed, amongst other methods. While people cannot cease inorganic methane emissions, we are capable of reducing our own emissions, both of carbon dioxide and methane gas. And while methane may dissipate in just over a decade, its short-term effects of heating the earth and melting permafrost not only contributes to the positive albedo feedback loop, but it releases more methane gas as well as the permafrost melts. This will cause property damage due to soil liquefaction and flooding as the waters rise. Break the cycle. Thank you.